So we are on day 16 of our Bible in a Year series, and today we're going to be covering Genesis chapters 46, 47, and 48. Um, we're going to discuss Jacob actually moving to Israel, Jacob blessing Pharaoh, as well as Jacob um, discussing his burial. So before we get started, let's pray. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to study your word with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, I pray that you open our eyes, minds, and ears so that we can interpret your word the way that you have intended for it to be interpreted. Lord, I pray that you bless and cover each and every single person that is participating in this Bible study series, Lord. And I pray that you just go before us and, and help us with our understanding, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Okay, so let's get started. Chapter 46. So Israel set out with all that he had and came to Beersheba, and he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. Now that night, God spoke to Israel in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he said. And Jacob replied, here I am. God said, I am the God. I am God, the God of your father. And I think this is really interesting because um he has to make it known which God he is because they there are so many different gods that were being worshipped during that time. I am the God of your father. Because if he were to just say, I am God, it would, which, which God? It was, it was a very polytheistic um, time. So he says, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt and I will also bring you back. Joseph will close your eyes when you die. Jacob left Beersheba. The sons of Israel took their father Jacob in the wagons Pharaoh had sent to carry him, along with their dependents and their wives. They also took their cattle and possessions they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Then Jacob and all his offspring with him came to Egypt. His sons and grandsons, his daughters his, and granddaughters, indeed all his offspring he brought with him to Egypt. Now, verse 8. There are, these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt, Jacob and his sons. Now we're going to go on a genealogical run here. So Jacob's firstborn Reuben, ja Jacob's firstborn Reuben, Jacob's firstborn Reuben, Reuben's sons, Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, Simon's son, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shal, the son of a Canaanite woman. Levi's son, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Judah's son, Er, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. Issachar's son, Tola, Puva, Jeshub, and Shimron. Zebulon's son, Sered, Elon, and Jahil. These were Leah's sons, born to Jacob and Padan Aram as well as his daughter, Dina. The total number of persons, 33. Now Gad's son, Ziphion, Haggai, Shani, Esbon, Eri, Arodi, and Erali. Asher's son, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Beria, and their sister, Sarah. Beria's son were Heber and Malkiel. These were the sons of Zipla, whom Laban gave to his daughter, Leah that she bore to Jacob 16 persons. The sons of Jacob's wife, Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph in the land of Egypt. They were born to him by Aseneth, daughter of Potiphar, a priest at On. Benjamin's son, Bela, Becher, Eshbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mupin, Hupin, and Ard. These were Rachel's sons who were born to Jacob. 14 persons. Dan's son, Hushim. Naphtali's sons, Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shalem. These were the sons born of Bila, whom Laban gave to his daughter, Rachel. She bore to Jacob seven persons. The total number of persons belonging to Jacob, his direct descendants, not including the wives of Jacob's sons, who came to Egypt, 66. And Joseph's sons, who were born to him in Egypt, two persons. All those of Jacob's household who came to Egypt, 70 persons. So we're in verse 28 now. So now Jacob had sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to prepare for his arrival at Goshen. When they came to the land of Goshen, Joseph hitched the horses to his chariot 
and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. Now Joseph presented himself to him, threw his arms around him, and wept for a long time. Then Israel said to Joseph, I'm ready to die now because I have seen your face and you're still alive. Now Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's family, I will go up and inform Pharaoh, telling him my brothers and my father's family who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds. They also raise livestock. They have brought their flocks and herds, all that they have. When Pharaoh addresses you and ask, what is your occupation? You are to say, your servants, both we and our ancestors, have raised livestock from our youth until now. Then you will be allowed to settle in the land of Goshen, since all shepherds are detestable to Egyptians. Now, chapter, we're in chapter 47 now. So Joseph went, to inform, Joseph went and informed Pharaoh, my father and brothers with their flocks and herds and all that they own have come from the land of Canaan and are now in the land of Goshen. He took five of his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh asked his brothers, what is your occupation? Just as uh, Joseph has said. They said to Pharaoh, your servants, both we and our ancestors are shepherds. And they said to Pharaoh, we have come to stay in the land for a while because there is no grazing land for, our, for your shepherd's sheep since the famine in the land of Canaan has been so severe. So now please let your servants settle in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, now that your father and brothers have come to you, the land of Egypt is open before you. Settle your father and brothers in the best part of the land. They can live in the land of Goshen. If you know of any capable men among them, put them in charge of my livestock. We're in verse 7 now. So Joseph then brought his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, how many years have you lived? Now listen to this. You have to understand that. Shepherds are detestable to Egyptian. Pharaoh is an Egyptian. So, and not just that, but he's coming from this famine, this impoverished land. And now he's here and he's saying, he, he blesses Pharaoh, who's already immensely blessed. Now, these are not people of God. These, they use divination. They use um, all sorts of sorcery. They use, they worship other deities. So to, to have someone that is far worse off than him, bless him was almost laughable so pharaoh says to jacob how many years have you lived and jacob said to pharaoh my pilgrim my pilgrimage has lasted 130 years my years have been few and hard and they have not reached the years of my ancestor doing their pilgrimages so jacob blessed pharaoh and departed from pharaoh's presence okay let's see now we're on verse uh, 11 then Joseph settled, settled his father and brothers in the land of Egypt and gave them property in the best part of the land, the land of Ramses, Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided his father and his brothers and all his family with food for their dependents. Now the land, but there was no food in the entire region for the famine was very severe. The land of Egypt and the land of Canaan were exhausted by the famine. Joseph collected all the silver to be found in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan in the exchange for the grain they were purchasing, and he bought the silver to Pharaoh's palace. When the silver from the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan were gone, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die here in front of you? The silver is gone. But Joseph said, Give me your livestock since the silver is gone, and I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. So despite all of this, they still had to abide by the, the laws of the land. So they brought their livestock to Joseph and he gave them food in exchange for the horses, the flocks of sheep, the herds of cattle, and the donkeys. That year he provided them with food in exchange for all their livestock. Now when that year was over, they came the next year and said to him, we cannot hide from our Lord that the silver is gone and that all, that our, lives, all, all our livestock belongs to our Lord. There is nothing left for our Lord, except our bodies and our land. Why should we die here in front of you, both of us, both us and our land? Buy us and our land in exchange for food. Then we, with our land, will become Pharaoh's slave. Give us seed so that we can live and not die. And so that the land won't be desolate, won't become desolate. In this way, Joseph acquired all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh, 
because every Egyptian sold his field since the famine was so severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's and Joseph made the people servants from one the land became Pharaoh's and Joseph made the people servants from one end of Egypt. The land became Pharaoh's and Joseph made the people servants from one end of Egypt to the other. The only land he did not acquire belonged to the priests for they had an allowance from Pharaoh. They ate their allowance that Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their land. It's funny like how everybody wants to be a, close to someone that has some sort of connection to God. And so the priests, which these are not holy priests, these aren't like godly priests, as as we would call priests, biblical priests, Levitical priests. These are priests of the deities that he served, that, um, that Pharaoh served. Okay, we are on. So we're on verse 23. So Joseph said to the people, understand today that I have acquired you and your land for Pharaoh. Here is seed for you. Sow it in the land. At harvest, you are to give a fifth of it to Pharaoh and fourth Four fifths will be yours as seed for the field and as food for yourselves, your households and your dependents. You have saved our lives, they said. We have found favor with our Lord and will be Pharaoh's slave. So Joseph made it a law still in effect today in the land of Egypt that a fifth of the produce belongs to Pharaoh. Only the priest's land does not belong to Pharaoh. Verse 27, so Israel settled in the land of Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired property in it and became fruitful and very numerous. Now, Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years and his lifespan was 147 years. And I think it's really interesting how they go be between calling um, Israel, Israel. So Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And so in the same paragraph, they'll note him, they'll call him Israel and Jacob. What are your thoughts on that? Why do you think that is? Okay, we are on verse 29. So when the time approached for him to die, he called his son jo he called his son Joseph and said to him, "If I found favor with you, put your hand under my thigh and promise me that you will deal with me in kindness and faithfulness. Do not bury me in Egypt. When I rest with my ancestors, carry me away from Egypt and bury me in their burial place." Joseph answered, "I will do what you have asked." And Jacob said swear to me so joseph swore to him then israel bowed in thanks at the head of his bed chapter 48 so some time after this joseph was told your father is weaker so he set out with his two sons Manasseh and ephraim when jacob was told your son joseph has come to you israel summoned his strength and sat up in bed Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me in, at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. He said to me, I will make you fruitful and numerous. I will make many nations come from you and I will give this land as permanent possession to your future descendants. Your two sons born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are now mine. Ephraim and Manasseh belong to me just as Reuben and Simon do. Children born to you after them will be yours and will be recorded under the names of their brothers with regard to their inheritance. Now, when I was returning from Paddan to my sorrow, Rachel died along the way. Some distance from Ephrath in the land of Canaan, I buried her there along the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. When Israel saw Joseph's sons, he said, who are these? And Joseph said to his father, they are my sons God has given me here. So Israel said, bring them to me and I will bless them. Now his eyesight was poor because of old age and he could hardly see. So Joseph said to them, so Joseph brought them to him and he kissed and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see you again, but now God has even let me see your offspring. Then Joseph took him, took them from his father's knees and bowed with his face to the ground. Then Joseph took them both. With his right hand, Ephraim towards Israel's left, and with his left hand, Manasseh towards Israel's right, and brought them to Israel. But Israel stretched out his right hand and put it on the head of Ephraim, the younger, and, cross, and crossing his hands, put his left on Manasseh's head. Although Manasseh was the firstborn, then he blessed Joseph and said, The God before The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, 
the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm. May, be, may he bless these boys and may they be called by my name and the names of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and may they grow to be numerous within the land. When Joseph saw that his father had placed his right hand on Ephraim's head, he thought it was a mistake and took his father's hand to move it to Ephraim, from Ephraim's to Manasseh's. Joseph said to his father, not that way, my father, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a tribe and he too will be great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he and his offspring will become a populous nation. So he blessed them that day, putting Ephraim before Manasseh when he said, the nation Israel will invoke blessings by you, saying, may God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. Israel said to Joseph, look, I'm about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you back to the land of your fathers. Over and above what I am giving your brothers, I am giving you the one mountain slope that I took from the Amorites with my sword and bow. And that is all we're going to cover today. Let me know in the comments if you got any type of insight, revelation, or anything from what we discussed today. And as always, if you found this, this video helpful or insightful in any capacity, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see similar content, subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Blessings.